Hello, and welcome to this training on how a grandmaster wins with one e4. In previous videos, Jez actually covered e5, c5, e6, c6, and d5 already. And of course, these are the five most common moves. But in this video, I will show you how I've had very good results against the alternatives and share with you my own personal experiences using the variations that I recommend in my very recent course, Crash Sub 800 with e4. And we're going to start with the modern defense with g6 because that's been the sixth most common move that I have faced in my own games. And actually this system I, I recommend is something I've even been playing for a little bit of time even before creating the course. But this bishop c4 is just a really nice system against the modern where funny enough most of my opponents have actually played a6 at this point. But I find that this setup is a bit less effective when you've got the bishop on the diagonal. Uh, one point is that like say if they go b5 then you know you're sort of not having to worry about your knight getting kicked with b4 as if you'd played knight c3. So another move that I often face was the move knight f6, but then after queen e2, we sort of see the idea of white setup that the bishop and queen are well placed to support e5 and e6. And e5 is indeed the move that I recommended in my uh, in my course and basically in the one game where I've played this so far. Because uh, more often in the past I was playing more play with castles, but then I kind of changed my mind and preferred to play this way. Well then after takes, takes, my opponent played knight fd7. I noticed by the way that most of my opponents and most of your opponents aren't going to play the best knight move here, which is knight d5. But yeah, they'll let you get in something like e6, just destroying the black structure and you're getting a, you know, a very nice advantage with pressure against the isolated pawn on e7. And I did go on to win this game against a 2000-ish rated player. Now there are other moves they can play as well, but if they do play something like a hippo of e6, I find that the approach where you just go for like bishop b3 and sort of play it like a Geller system works quite well. Uh, I haven't used this exact move order yet in the game, but that'll be something I will do on the next opportunity. And also, yeah, I mean, there are other moves I face. Like if they go c5, I usually... I play different moves here, but I kind of like going c3. This is what I recommended in my uh, in my course actually just transposing back into Alep and Sicilian territory with uh, d5 and e5. Uh, you will still need to know like a couple more precise moves here to get an advantage but it's something I do cover in the course. Again I'm not going to give away every single one of my secrets in this video but just to give you a teaser yeah, of how I've produced different strategic ideas to easily outplay my opponents most of whom on chess.com are rated below 2000 in the unrated blitz and bullet games. Um, now also what if they play something like d6 for example, after d4, knight f6, knight c3, against the Pierce, actually the line I recommend in the course is bishop g5, and this is a very dangerous weapon, where after e5, black already has to walk a little bit of a minefield just to avoid losing right the opening. To show you what I mean, after takes and takes, if they play queen takes d1, which is what my opponents normally played. Then white's ready to go knight d5 in many positions and just win the c7 pawn outright. Uh, for example, if knight fd7, I had a game against like a play rate 16, 1700, where I went knight d5. And my opponent, yeah, just cast and just let me take c7. But there are also some nice tricks at bishop e5 where you can end up like winning materials and nice tactics. Again, I do show that in a lot more detail in the course, but you can take my word for it. This position is already basically close to winning for white, in fact. So, so that is kind of one of the main traps, let's say, in the course that most of your opponents are going to fall for, because nearly everybody plays d5 and then queen d1 and like below 2000 and just falls headlong into the trap. And if they do play something like knight d7 and you try to play a philidor, precisely a Hanum philidor, well then I recommend this move of rook g1 in the course. It's something I've been playing quite a bit for the last couple of years, so you just go g4, g5, Bishop e3, long castles, and just get a very strong attacking setup. I didn't play this against some strong players. While I'm not as happy with the results as they could be, I still have won most of my games some against some pretty good players. And yeah, it's definitely something that will shock your opponent. Like even grandmasters have been kind of getting crushed against this rook g1 hack system. Such so a little bit of kind of secret weapon I think you guys are really going to enjoy and be very successful with. Uh, as for the sidelines, like at b6, yeah, I just normally go d4. And the step I recommend, the course I find just is super effective against these b6 players, is to go knight c3 and then play knight e2. 
And the fun part about this setup is that basically they just don't get any real pressure on e4 because you can take with the knight and keep e4 defended. Most of my opponents normally play bishop c3, like just giving up the bishop here, even without me provoking with a3 first, which is quite nice for us. If they castle, yeah, e5, and I just have won quite a few games just going for a big attack on their king. While they do play d6, I've tried a few different approaches, like f4, e5. I mean, this is a general plan for white, just push the king side pawns forward when knight moves you like a queen g4 and just get a really big attack with the central space, the bishop pair, and, uh, and so forth here. And lead in development, we might add. So b6 is not really something to worry about. Uh, as for the move knight f6, actually after e5, knight d5, d4, d6. So the line I recommend in the in the course is the exchange variation, which is not the system I played the most often against the Alican, but I have played it a fair bit over the years. Where after e d6, you know, I played knight c3. And it's bishop d3, knight e2. This is why I recommend in the course. And it's a pretty nice setup. So if they go bishop g4, you can just kind of go f3 and just kick the bishop away at a good moment. Like castles, knight c6, f3. Well, actually, I had this in the game against an IM where yeah, I just I didn't play b3, which I will recommend in my course, but I still managed to win the game all the same. Uh, actually, after cd6, it turns out that actually have not yet played the move I recommend in the course in my game, so it's going to be a bit of a secret weapon for those who do buy the course, then yeah, again, I don't want to give away every single little secret, but I think it's a line that, yeah, that you are really going to like. Like, even as a grandmaster, I didn't really know about the strength of this line until I, you know, researched it quite recently for the course. Anyway, finally, if they do play something like knight c6, then yeah, I just find knight f3 to be a good practical move. A lot of time your opponents play e5 and just transfers back into you know, the Scotch Gambit tree we looked at in the first video of the series. And the other moves are really not too much to worry about. Like knight f6, e5 is kind of just an improved alleycan for white, where knight c6 doesn't totally gel with black setup. And if they do play something like f5, the Colorado counter gambit, I face this in a few games, but I find that as long as you know to move bishop b5 and, you know, just gang up on the e5 fourth square, then yeah, you're just massively better here as white. So yeah, that pretty much covers the sidelines against e4, and yeah, I do realize that someone you know, could in theory use this series as a foundation to start playing this repertoire in their own games, but I also want to emphasize, yeah, that this is just scratching the surface of these positions, that there are a few more details, a few other moves that you will face, of course, quite a lot in your own games, like more often, let's say, against sub-1800 players, um, as I found from, you know, looking it up in the Lee Chess Open Explorer database, looking at the games of players below 1800, to see what are the moves you're going to face most often and how can we get the maximum advantage against them so that we can you know, get as many quick wins or easy wins as possible at the opening against these players. If that's something that you want to have to just basically get a 60% plus win rate in virtually all of your lines within 1e4 is white. And 60 plus is even a bit conservative. It'll be even higher when you play the recommendations I give. Then yeah, definitely make sure to check out Crush Sub 800 with e4 up to you whether you want to you know, buy the course directly or just enjoy the free sample first and take it from there. But I've included both the links in the description. So yeah, make sure to check that out and I'll see you guys in the next training. Take care.